We have all heard about the millennials. This generation was born between 1984 and 1998. But what about the generation right behind them? Generation Z, born between 1999 and 2015. Uh, I myself have four children um, from this generation. Well, actually five if you count my youngest, who was born in July 2015. This generation is starting high school and university now, and they, and now I'm not necessarily talking about my own children, they seem to be very different from their millennial predecessors in many ways. In general, they seem less religious, more focused on success, more diverse, more fascinated by technology, and more inclined to embrace different views on sexual identity. Actually, it is rather hard to label them if you wanted to at all. How do we deal with this as church? Are we willing and are we equipped to help this generation flourish in this new cultural landscape while helping to do justice to their faith in Jesus? Um, the Barna Group, a well-known American Christian research group, uh, not long ago completed a study on this generation. Well, that was in 2018. While the 2024 group is pretty much between the ages of 9 and 25, the study looked mainly at people in the 13 to 18 age group. As a whole, therefore, their views may change as younger members of the generation mature. Uh, mature. According to the report, Generation Z is characterized by six facets. Worldview, identity, technology, parents, uh, assurance and diversity. Well, you can seem to go either way with that, of course. Yet it offers us churches, Christian leaders and parents important opportunities, but certainly also challenges. These young people are growing up in a society where religion, especially Christianity, is no longer seen as the most important thing. Everything around them has gone haywire and they now live amid prevailing relativism. Uh, according to the Barna report, uh, young people of this generation are more likely to call themselves athe atheists. Uh, the Christian worldview is no longer the starting point and therefore irrelevant for many of them. In general, it seems that this generation is much better at accepting dissenters. They are open to most diverse views. This also makes it difficult for them to take a hardline stance on morality. They are afraid of hurting the other person's feelings. You often see this in the heated discussions where they are being asked to take a stand and for someone like me this is just terrible to see their moral compass seems to be completely flexible and it is unclear which path they actually want to take and as mentioned uh, if you push them a little they can only do a poor job of making decisions or judgments based on solid values or beliefs yet i believe that here lies an, a tremendous opportunity for the church. The Christian worldview teaches that we should have compassion for others. Jesus showed us that we should care for others, especially those uh, who are left out. We may teach young people what it is to show true love. The love we have for our fellow man should be rooted in the true God. Let's read Deuteronomy 32 verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. In turn, we may learn about their diversity. In the Netherlands, we know a saying uh, which translates something like, Our dear Lord has strange borders. Well, in other words, we have had strange people within the family of God throughout the ages. People who never really fit in. Uh, but if we are honest, those strange borders uh, were always greatly outnumbered. Often we have seen those weirdos leave the church and join a congregation with more room for their weirdness. 
Well, Generation Z can help us be more understanding of people from other backgrounds or other uh, behaviors. They can teach adults the importance of loving people who are different from them. And this is not really rocket science. I quite often ask my children why some young people do or say this or that. And generally my children can articulate just fine what the motivations might be. Speaking of worldviews, many of the Generation Z people did not grow up in the church and have no real idea about what Jesus did. No, well, here comes the Christian and the Christian starts talking about their sin and that they need to be saved from it. Yes, we say, Jesus died in your place so that your debt to God can be forgiven. And if time permits, we will quickly tell the anecdote of the judge who passes judgment, but then takes off his gown to bear the punishment himself. Well, this explanation of Jesus' redemptive work is kind of a, a, legally, um, a, a legal approach, and it fits nicely into the biblical framework, but many Gen Zers um, will look at you like you're crazy. They have hardly heard about sin and Christianity overall, except that what the social media told them. And mind you, they are aware of the misery in the world. Often they themselves sense that something is really wrong because of all the media pressure, insecurity and lack of identity. Deep down, many just feel pretty lousy. Instead of the usual penal substitution doctrine, which I just described, it might work better to talk about all the other work Jesus accomplished. Uh, he removed the shame between man and God. Uh, Jesus conquered the dark powers. Um, he promised peace and a light burden, and so on and so forth. Jesus' work is much more than a legal settlement. I've written a bit about this uh, before in an article about missions. Well, I, I will just post a link to that in the description of this video. And a big surprise here. The report also shows that almost one third of Generation Z have no problems with gen uh, transgenderism. A large proportion of these young people believe that, they, that you can be born a boy, but feel like a girl. So for them, and this is 69%, gender does not depend on your chromosomes, but on how a person feels. This also makes many of them struggle with whom they really are. Um, we sometimes jokingly say that transgenderism seems to be a hype and a hype which is highly contagious. And what emerges out of this research? It seems that many young people tend to adapt their own sexuality in order to show empathy to groups that have been left out. So their inclusiveness and empathy is the most important aspect in their relationships. The question of course is what we do with that in the church. And I don't know about you, but I have heard very few Bible studies, if any, or sermons uh, about sexuality. Many church leaders are pretty much uncomfortable about the whole subject. And if it is discussed at all, it is quickly done from a viewpoint of condemnation. It is time to put the biblical theology around sexuality on the agenda. It is okay for the church to take a clear and loving stance on, ide uh, on identity and uh, healthy sexuality. That's not a problem. Are we also willing to learn from Generation C how we may respond um, empathetically to others? That's the question. You see, education is not a, a one-direction monologue like it used to be in the old times. We should not immediately close all doors if we do not quite agree on biblical beliefs. Again, we need to show what Christianity, um, not Christianity, but what Christian charity really means. Technology. There is no escaping this. The vast majority of young people spend four or more hours a day on the internet. And this is actually the first generation to see that their parents also spend a lot of time um, behind the screen. The problem is that many young people lead a kind of double life. Online, they're often very different from how they really feel. Online, they're happy, joyful and confident. 
and many have a different identity online and sometimes they act downright bad while in real life they are pretty much insecure. You see, when I had to write a paper for school in uh, when I was young, I just had to go to the library on my bicycle and I actually got most of my news from the TV. Well, not that that is so brilliant, but still my little world was pretty much simple. Today's youngsters have a huge amount to digest, much more than they actually can handle. They are presented with the most diverse moral ideas without having the time to process them properly, let alone react to them properly. And let's face it, this development is a challenge for all of us. I mean, it's a challenge for me. But when all is said and done, we adults have developed our identity, at least we should have. But it is particularly problematic and damaging for, for young people who are still in the process of developing their identity. Teaching about our identity in Christ and our intrinsic worth and dignity as image bearers of God is extremely important. We should not be afraid to offer help to parents who struggle with parenting. That's just something we should do. Church leaders need to be aware that Technology could serve us, terrible as it may be, but platforms like TikTok and Instagram lend themselves well to sharing the Christian message. At the same time, it would be good to organize fun outings with the youth, just apart from the smartphone, outings, get-togethers, barbecues or whatever, and, and luckily I see a lot of churches already doing this, as long as it, uh, it as long as it focuses on personal interaction. Churches should try to let young people experience that they don't have to be happy, joyful and successful all the time. They may learn who they are in Christ. Just a heads up for us parents. Generation C looks up to us. They, uh, they like to look uh, to family when it comes to role models. But at the same time, they no longer put family ties as uh, at number one when it comes to their own identity. You used to be the, the son or daughter of such and such. Now, young people very quickly tend to hang their identity on a group outside the family. Unfortunately, we also see that this generation is suffering from the effects of many broken families. We also see many parents who seem to understand little of the issues facing their teenagers. And then we also see that parents have no time, resources or energy to educate their children uh, thoroughly. Uh, they prefer to leave biblical teaching to the youth leader and they assume that the brief Bible reading at the table, if at all, is enough. Serious churches should invest in parenting and family training. If we expect fathers to raise their sons in the ways of the Lord, we should also help those fathers shape that. In addition, um, it is important that as a congregation or church, we are a place where young people from a broken family may experience love and security. Uh, mothers and fathers should actively approach and engage these young people in the things of the Lord, that is. Many people find this uncomfortable, you know, how do you approach this teenager? But honestly, I have actually never come across a young person who was annoyed when I had a quick chat with him or her. You don't have to make yourself look cooler or speak the young people's language on purpose. What you do, uh, what you have to do is just listen, uh, ask questions and listen again. Now what strikes me is that many young people are very concerned with financial success. A lot seems to be focused on their achievement. And what do I read in the Barna survey? About two thirds, 65 or 66% of Generation C want, want to finish their education, start a career and be financially independent by the age of 30. On the other hand, only one in five that is only 20% want to get married by then. I mentioned earlier that Generation C looks for role models, preferably within their own family. It is therefore extremely important that we within the church pay attention to 
Bible teaching regarding money and possessions. It is too short of the mark to just exclaim that the desire for money is the root of all evil. Just a quick lesson about the rich young man who went away sad when Jesus told him to sell his possessions is not enough either. Biblical teaching on money and possessions go much deeper. We need to discuss things like rest, sleep, uh, leisure. The Bible is very clear that we need these things for a healthy lifestyle. What good is it if, like the farmer, you only amass possessions and end up not being able to do anything with them because you died of a heart attack? God can use rich people just fine. But we need to be constantly reminded that our security or assurance comes from the Lord. Psalm 20 verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Our young people may learn that they cannot buy life with their money. Life is in God's hand. Luke 12 verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Education and guidance is also important because we also understand that not everyone actually becomes financially successful, right? So in that case, it is good to know that Jesus is ultimately the one who gives us abundantly. Let's read John 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I, that is the Lord Jesus, am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now diversity is one of those typical buzzwords that actually gives me the creeps. Yet we cannot escape it. Barna notes that Generation C is the most diverse group in terms of ethnicity we have ever seen. The funny thing is that the research shows actually that black and Latino teens place more importance on family and communal matters in general than their white friends. And in doing so, they seem to be closer to the biblical ideal than the other groups. But this is an American study, so it may well be slightly different in the Netherlands or in other European countries. Still, it is good to know this. Generation C seems to have less trouble with these differences. They have less difficulty dealing with the way Christians from the Caribbean uh, worship uh, versus the strict Calvinistic Dutch people, for example. In this respect, Generation C people are perfectly capable of um, helping us interpret and accept these differences. Generation C is more passionate when it comes to inclusion and acceptance of the strange or uh, uh, weird borders uh, than previous generations. In general, multi-ethnic communities are much more attractive, uh, attractive to this generation. Now, Christian leaders, regardless of their own cultural background, would do well to learn about the history, uh, the heritage and the contributions of other ethnic groups, including the country and church they are in. Um, church history is much more than Luther, Swingley or Calvin. Church history is incredibly uh, diverse. Now, not everything is good, but let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. For many of us, listening to an enthusiastic jumping up and down speaker from uh, Suriname will take some getting used to. But for the average Gen Seer, um, it is the most normal thing in the world. I want to come to a closing. Let me cite Jonathan Morrow. He said, the biggest gift you can give your Gen Seer in your household is a safe place for them to ask questions and express doubts and process what they interact with because their whole experience is being narrated by the culture, by the media, by Netflix, everything else. And I could not have said it better. There is a need for radical discipleship. Many young people really do not consciously reject Jesus. What they just can't come to terms with are so-called 
Christian views when it comes to uh, politics and other sociological insights that cannot necessarily be traced back to the Bible. Many of our insights are based on certain traditions, and this is not necessarily wrong, but as soon as they contradict biblical values, they can go out the window as far as I'm concerned. Generation Zeus can't really stand hypocrisy which is what keeps many of them from wanting to know Christ. However, it needs to be said that many of them fail to reflect on their own hypocrisy. Many are quick to know that Christians are intolerant, but at the same time they fail explaining anything concrete about moral standards. Many of their moral are emotionally based. We need to be fully aware however that this is not an unwillingness from their side it is just a byproduct of the whole atmosphere they mostly grow up in we need to pay more attention to the challenges facing generation z we must learn to hang out with them instead of retreating in our safe bunker uh, in this post-christian society it is more appealing for generation c to hear and listen to a fully committed follower of christ than to have to listen to christians who know everything better and are basically unwilling to change certain ideas we need to be willing to put aside man-made traditions no again not all traditions are bad but sometimes it can't hurt to put them aside generation c forces us to look seriously at our own lives with Jesus. It won't always be easy and we may be reviled by our own party. I mean, Jesus was not much appreciated for his high profile actions either, right? Genuine consideration for sinners, respect for women, compassion for the sick, how dare he? Luke 15 verse 2 and the Pharisees and scribes murmured saying this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them but how much joy there will be in heaven if we are allowed to lead our young people to the Lord with devotion love and attention let's read Luke 15 verse 10 likewise I say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth let me briefly give you a little justification. Don't think I am watering down the gospel. Certainly not. But we need to realize that not everything we do can always be traced back to God's word. Many of our church and Christian customs simply stem from human traditions and that can often be fine in themselves, but can sometimes get in the way of unbelievers seeing the truth. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Remember, I'm mostly active on my Odyssey channel. You can find a link to that channel as well to all my other channels in the description of this video or on my website, of course. If you find what I do interesting, you can subscribe to my channel. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of new videos, that is. I really appreciate your prayers and support. Check out the description of this video to see how you can help me. Uh, I will also place a link uh, in the description to both the Dutch and English transcripts of this video. Thank you very much for watching, God's blessings, and Lord willing we'll see each other in the next video. Thank you for watching this video, you can give me a thumbs up if you liked it. You can also subscribe to my channel or even better, follow me on Odyssey. That way you will never miss a new video. You will find all the links in the description below.